So, hello, this is not the cheerful video you probably expect from me of me being a sake cow bag, but it's me, Candy, and I've been robbed. Um, I want to preface this by saying this is an ongoing investigation, so I'm not going to go into too many details about it, but needs to say it was a horrible experience. Um, my entire camera bag was taken, um, and I'm not going to go into how it was taken, but needs to say it was a well disguised bag it's just a bag there's no like logos on it i don't have anything i don't even carry a tripod on it um but i was there in london for a lens baby meetup um i spent a beautiful day with everybody it was lens baby ambassadors there were some people who were traveling into the uk and they were ambassadors i thought let's do a meetup there was like four of us stunning women had the best time took some amazing pictures you know like real bangers i was like oh my god i'm getting this street photography malarkey like, i'm getting good and then i take an uber from where we were to where i was heading to houston um and it happened in a matter of seconds you can actually see a bruise <laughs> um it won't really matter what happened as such but they made off with my camera bag which had my brand new nikon mirrorless uh z6i double i sorry the mark ii whatever you call it it had the adapter in it the ftz2 or my lens baby kit pretty much bar my um, obscura because we're doing meetups so we're going to use all the lens babies so they have all that they have the omni filters they have two xqd whatever you call it cards they have three of my batteries because if anyone knows the nikon mirrors eats the battery and, and just some like my headphones that i use but i wasn't even wearing them like they didn't get my phone which was surprising but they didn't um and yeah so i'm going to talk to you about why it's really shitty but you probably already know this um, but more importantly, the after fact, actually, like, for I've, my brain has, like, I love this camera bag. Um, it was new to me. And I got a vintage, like, brand new, but from somebody who didn't use it. Um, and it was a really cool camera bag, so, and it doesn't look like a camera bag. It's such, it's just a black one, which is, you know, it was cool. It's really well made. Um, anyway, I can't replace it. They stopped selling it, which was I'm a bit gutted about. Um, although I have found one in America, so I might have to look if I'm going to get one from America. But then I've got to pay all the import tax. Anyway. What annoys me is the hoops you have to go through, which I didn't realise. When you're a victim of crime, I realise you have insurance, because I have insurance, was the fact that I still have to pay the excess, even though it's a crime committed against me. So you still pay for the crime to be committed. Like, I'm paying for the privilege of a crime committed against me. Um, don't get me wrong, Policy B have been great so far. I'm hoping they'll pay my policy out, um, because I was behaving in a completely normal manner. There wasn't anything ostentatious about what I was doing. There was nothing terrible. Not on the influence of anything. Just, Just, you know... Um, and I just was really kind of overwhelmed by the fact that I had to pay this and I was talking to one of my friends, it was a really horrible experience. And some of my friends were just like, why haven't you set up a GoFundMe? And I was really like, because I'm not that kind of person, you know, this is my responsibility, I need to shoulder it. And my friends got really annoyed and said, like, look, we're going to set one up. And I was like, okay, that's spanked a scam if I saw that. So I put one up and I just cheered purely for my excess that I would have to pay. And people have humbled me, like people have literally come out and paid what little they can i never expect anyone to pay it and i actually thought i would be like for ages just like okay i got maybe 10 quid um but i was absolutely blown away by how lovely people were um it really changed my mind on a lot of what you know we see a lot of badness in the news and these are people who are, you don't think you're worth anything to anybody sometimes and then you see these people like listen we want to help you and i have said though um once i've bought everything and if there's any money left over i will be donating that um I'm not sure if there will be. I'm just going to preface that um, because I don't want to offer something and not be able to do it. But if there is, I would like to donate maybe to the Disability Disabled Photography Society. I think that's what they're called because I buy lots of them in the NEC and they're a great cause. But um, it's horrible to think somebody has got my camera that I work so hard to pay for that is part of my livelihood. Yes, I have backups. I have my full frame still. But this is my mirrorless. You know, I've only literally got it three months ago from Wex. Um, and they're out there and they don't even have all the stuff to like charge it. They don't have... Like, it's got all my copyright information on. Um, yes, there was a tag in it, but that's been removed. We we found that. Um, but it's just it's just the fact that... It's just the fact that like I took all these images and they're gone forever. And I have this weird feeling of responsibility over those images. And they are of nobody. They're literally just street photography. But, like... And I just... I'm absolutely gutted. And I just feel like... I'm Like, to replace all this kit is going to be well into nearly five grand... It's going to be nearly and all the loss of earnings because um, I was booked to do two lens baby specific shoots this week. And now obviously I can't do that. Um, I can't rent anything or borrow anything from anyone because there aren't anybody around. And this is kind of where I'm sitting at the moment. Like I just feel like I've really let the side down and I feel ashamed. I know I didn't ask to get mugged and no one should be feeling that way. But uh, this weird sense that I've got some responsibility for it. I have no idea why. But I feel like I've always been really careful with my kit. And um, I've never been robbed like this. And um, 
I just feel awful. So this is to all the photographers who don't have insurance and are just relying on their home insurance. Please go get insurance. I use Policy B at the minute. They're going through the process. It's been pretty painless. Go ask them. Say, can you we sent you if you're in the UK? You get a little like bonusy thing. Um, this is in no way endorsed, but let me just tell you so far the, pain, the process has been painless. Maybe in a couple of weeks, if they ever, if, I, I don't know if I'll still be saying that, but, but it's the fact that like, conveniently, other than the two shoots, I am okay. But I just remember feeling sick to my stomach about it all and I'm still like struggling with the whole loss of my stuff because I know there's a horrible situation going on in the world. I hope, I know people are out of money, but this isn't like stealing food, like to feed yourself. This is literally opportunistically stealing somebody's bag. They had no idea what was in their bag. And from what I'm told, they were loads of bags stolen around that time. And it's kind of a thing that happens in that area. But no one tells you. And I took an Uber to there to get into Euston. So I didn't have to take the tube. So that I was safer. And then this happens. Um, I'm not going the woe is me thing. I just want it to be a lesson. Always keep your wits about you. And just from a personal thing. Let the bag go. If someone's going to get you. Let the bag go. Okay. Just, just let it go. That's why you have insurance. And everything is replaceable but you. So let the bag go. Have a day. I'm not going to ask you to like and subscribe because that's just weird. But I'll see you on the next video. I promise I'll be happier. Ish.